I want to talk about what historian Timothy Snyder has said regarding the plans Trump and Vance have to deport 10 to 20 million undocumented immigrants. Professor Snyder has written books about forced deportations, and he recently asked the question, are we taking Trump's and Vance's plans seriously enough? The 10 million, 11 million, or even 20 million undocumented immigrants that Trump talks about deporting describe individuals. You have to think of them as one times 10 million, and each one means a violent and degrading situation that demoralizes not only the person being deported, but the person doing the deporting, as well as everyone who informs the authorities. Each situation involves a small instance of violence in apartment buildings, homes, and in schools all across the country that add up to a huge scale that will affect everyone. There will be violence that you see, violence that you don't see, violence that you hear about, and violence that you worry about. This is going to involve real people, you know. Because of these kinds of numbers, someone you know will be involved, whether it's a colleague at work or a friend of a friend or your nephew's girlfriend. It's going to involve the people who you think are documented but turn out not to be documented. It's going to involve the people who themselves think they're documented but turn out not to be documented. But it will be people you know. It will break up families because 20 million American families are mixed status families. Nearly one in 10 U.S. citizen children come from mixed status families. So children will be left behind with all the sadness and instability that comes with that. The government will make mistakes about who is a U.S. citizen. That always happens when people are deported. And even if the mistakes they make are only 1% of 10 million people, that is still 100,000 individuals who will be wrongly deported. If you have a friend who lost their birth certificate, it could be them. Or it could be you. Now imagine the United States is going to deport 10 million people. Who is going to do the deporting? There aren't enough federal law enforcement officers to deport 10 million people, so local police and sheriff's officers will be involved. This will mean their attention is turned to deporting people, not protecting you and your families from crime. Then think about this. How does the government find 10 million immigrants? They will have to rely on people denouncing their neighbors, their acquaintances, maybe their co-workers. Snyder says, whether or not you were documented, if you come from a Latino family, you're going to be denounced, or there's a very good chance you're going to be denounced, and you're going to have to worry about who is going to denounce you. Denouncing people will become a normal thing, and it will ruin people. People who have some kind of grudge or want to harm another person could denounce them or threaten to denounce them, and the person being denounced will be in trouble whether or not they're deported. So fear of denunciation means you may have to change the way you live and maybe stay out of sight. Certainly, you'll have to stay out of trouble. Deportation will divide Hispanic communities because the federal government will expect them to cooperate, to find people who are not documented, to know who they are and where they live. Some will cooperate and others won't, and this will divide communities. Local leaders, mayors, city council members, businessmen and women will be expected to help. Some will, others won't, and it will be a terrible choice they will have to make. Some people will resist, they will run, and people will try to help them. This is an intended part of deportation because it will allow the federal government to crack down on the resistors and create a culture of fear and repression, not just against individual people, but against whole communities. Timothy Snyder says, these deportations won't be quick, won't be complete, and they will never be over. Whether you're Hispanic or not, you could be the target of violence. And that is the purpose of something like this, to change the political atmosphere, to create a culture of fear. The political atmosphere will change with the denunciations, and everyone will be affected. Our country will change, and it will become much worse. But it doesn't have to be like this. We can resist being sucked in by Trump's and Vance's lies about immigrants. We can ground ourselves with the rigorous analysis done by nonpartisan groups like the Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy or the Congressional Budget Office to find out the truth about immigrants. And the truth is immigrants contribute in every way possible to our communities. They harvest our food, teach our children, care for our loved ones, and boost our economy mightily. Here's what you may not know. 
According to the census, one in eight workers in New Mexico is an immigrant and almost 20% of New Mexico's self-employed are immigrants. Immigrants start new businesses and file patents at a higher rate than U.S.-born citizens. Immigrant entrepreneurs generate hundreds of millions of dollars in business revenue for New Mexico. Undocumented immigrants give more than they take. They help to shore up Social Security without ever receiving benefits. The Internal Revenue Service created a program 25 years ago that allowed people without a Social Security number to file taxes. Good evidence suggests that at least half of undocumented immigrant households currently file income tax returns. Many who don't file still have taxes deducted from their paychecks. And yet, undocumented immigrants can't collect most taxpayer-funded government services, including Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, child care subsidies, and food stamps or housing assistance. Immigrants who hope to become citizens know that using publicly funded services can jeopardize their ability to get citizenship. Did you know that immigrants and undocumented people pay about $67 million in state and local taxes in New Mexico? A couple of million dollars more than what it costs to educate the children of undocumented workers in public schools. And although children can be costly when they're young, those costs are paid out through a lifetime of taxes and provide high dividends in succeeding generations. Watch a few episodes of PBS's Finding Your Roots. America's history is filled with stories of immigrants arriving penniless, but within a couple of generations, thanks to U.S. education, they pay back in spades the support they received as newcomers by becoming professionals, business owners, and the essential workers our economy needs. Did you know crime rates for undocumented immigrants are lower than those of U.S.-born residents? Do a Google search or check the National Center of Justice if you doubt it. Despite punching above their weight in terms of economic contribution, immigrants could contribute even more. Granting legal status to undocumented immigrants in New Mexico would boost their payments to our state and local governments by more than $8 million to $75 million, because incomes would go up and comprehensive reform measures would require full compliance with tax law. We're missing a chance to boost our economy by not passing comprehensive immigration reform. What if your decision this year determines what kind of country you live in? One where our hardworking immigrant neighbors live in peace while contributing to our communities, where an orderly, well-staffed immigration system keeps out drugs and criminals, or one where we denounce our neighbors in order to deport them, separating families, generating hate and repression, and making us constantly afraid. We can choose the country we want by electing leaders like Kamala Harris and Gabe Vasquez, as well as all Democrats, up and down the ballot. Together, we can build the future that we want.